for those who watched parts 5 may now have an explanation on how Luba and Songhe was once sometimes perceived as an interchangeable identity as a result of social dynamics which involved trade, conquering and language. These social dynamics reached all the way to Gonda speaking lands in North Kasai up to Manyema. Let's go back to another oral tale before any conquering forces reached the Kasai interiors. Primarily focusing on the dense forest in North Kasai up to Manyema, there were inhabitants there speaking Gonda languages. One of these Gonda speaking populations from Kasai would have ventured into a region in the old Equator province, which we know today as Mbumba in Mongala. The father of this group went by the title Kutsu Membele and he had three children named Ngando, Njovu and Tambolo. During their time in this region there would have been a dispute amongst Ngando, Njovu and Tambolo in relation to the sharing of an antelope they hunted. This caused the three brothers to split when they were venturing back to Kasai. Njovu's descendants would reside in north to northwest in Kasai. Ngando's descendants would reside north to northeast in Kasai up to Manyema and Tambolo's descendants resided in the centre of Kasai up to Lomami district in southeast Kasai. Approaching the 18th century, some of Jovu's descendants would have been absorbed into what we know today as the Kuba kingdom. This ended up forming intelligible languages, dialects and terms amongst the interior Gonda speaking populations who were north and the east of the Kuba kingdom. In the 18th century, some of Ngando's descendants would have been conquered by Baluba people. This formulated intelligible languages, dialects and terms amongst Gonda speaking people residing in East Kasai up to Manyema. In the 19th century, some of Tambolo's descendants will become subjects of Baluba, Songhe and Swahili speaking populations which formulated ethnically mixed populations in the southeast in Kasai up to Manyema. Some of the groups from these populations were called Watetera by the Sultan Swahili Arabs. It was this group Watetera whom in the 19th century were documented as Kasai's slave raiders on behalf of the Sultan Swahili Arabs. The enslaved Gonda speaking people within this Watetera grouping were nicknamed Kusu by the Sultan Swahili Arabs. The name Kusu was a corrupted pronunciation of the word Kasuku which means parrot. These Gonda speakers were called Kusu by the Sultan Swahili Arabs because they had a custom of wearing parrot feathers on their head. It's very important to note within the Luba Kingdom states there were also customs of wearing parrot feathers and it's likely the Sultan Swahili Arabs also spread this term on some groups who came from Luba Kingdom states. In the mid 19th century, it is important to note the term Batetela did not exist to denote a tribe or an ethnicity, but the term Watetera existed, which referred to the populations on the eastern side of Manyema down to the Tanganyika shores. I say this to highlight the Watetera were slave raiding descendants of Njovu in northern Kasai around the mid 19th century. Some of these descendants of Njovu were best known as Kela, Mpeshi, Mbole, Konda and Kale. Due to these slave raids, the descendants of Njovu would go deeper into the Kasai forests, creating difficult to see forest huts, which were known as Shambas. Therefore, these Sultan Swahili Arabs began referring to some of Njovu's descendants as Hamba people which is a corruption of the word Shamba. Some of these populations in North Sankuru who were captured by the Watetera would have been taken into Baluba, Nyangwe and Ototera trading states throughout Manyema down to the Lomami district in southeast Kasai. The Sultan Swahili Arabs refer to some of these northern Kasai Konda speaking captives as Lemba and the Konda speaking Lemba refer to their patrons as Sungu 
which comprised a mixture of Arabized and non-Arabized songe and Gusu subjects. Though there is no strong proof, it seems to me the name Lemba actually came about by the enslaved Gonda speaking populace from North Kasai attempting to imitate the Arabs head wraps. If not, then perhaps the name Lemba came about due to the environment being full of leaves of banana trees. Another weaker idea would be any headgear worn was usually associated with the atmosphere such as feathers of a dove, parrot and clouds and this is mentioned on the basis they refer to their feathered crowns as Lembo and they grew their hair into a halo. For those who watched part 5 may remember I mentioned the Songhe of Lomami district in southeast Kasai were raided by another Songhe group referred to as Nsapu Nsapu. Some of Dambolo's descendants would have been affected by this raid and fled into the Sankoho district's forest along with some Songhe. It will be very beneficial and vital you understand this area in Sankoho district was only inhabited by Konda speaking people in this time. Nobody was called Batetela or Kusu within this Sankoho district. In the late 19th century, invading Europeans would plan to take over the entire country which we know today as DR Congo and the leaders of the Arabized Watetera populations along with the Nsapu Nsapu and some Baluba groups became allied sentries for the Europeans false public and they got all their enslaved subjects conscripted into the false public in order to fight against their former patrons who were the Sultan Swahili Arabs. The enslaved conscripted were Konda speaking populations from North Kasai who made up the majority whilst the Kusu troops were usually the Arabized amongst the Gonda speaking populations. It was mainly during the Congo Arab War the name Batetela began to surface for two major possible reasons. The Gonda speaking forest populations within the Sankoho districts were known to be exceptional basket makers and were nicknamed as Otete people which is their word for basket but the more plausible reason is the invading Europeans refer to their Watetera allies as Batetera using the Ba prefix instead of the Swahili Wa prefix. This term will in no doubt be immediately translated to Batetela considering Konda speaking populations do not pronounce the letter R properly neither do these Gonda speaking populations have terms beginning with R. An example of this would be the Sultan Swahili Arabs called the leader of the Watetera Kasongo Rushi whilst the Gonda speaking populations will say Lushi or Kushi instead of Rushi. So this is just to explain the term Watetera or Batetera became Batetela to the Europeans. So going back to the war against the Sultan Swahili Arabs, the Sultan Swahili Arabs would eventually suffer a defeat in the late 19th century and all the Arabized and former leaders of the Watetera were being called Batetela at this time along with Songhe and Gonda speaking captives. The main noted leaders of the Batetela were documented by the Europeans as Ngongolutet Mpanya Mutombo and Lumpungu. It is important to understand none of these individuals are from the Sankohu's district's Gonda speaking populations. Small research on names like Lumpungu and Mutombo will help you discover these are Baluba and Songhe names. These Batetela leaders were instructed to get their captive to harvest rubber in the higher upper Kasai known as the Sankohu district. Eventually, large-scale revolts would break out in 1895 across Kasai as a result of oppressive slave labour, which is a comfortable argument against a pushed narrative which amplifies the revolts emerged because one of the Batetela leaders was killed for treason against the invading Europeans. If this was the case, I argue these revolts should have occurred in 1893 
as this was the death year of the Batetela leader who was known as Ngongo Lutet. During the revolt, the majority of the mutineers were of Gonda speaking forest populations in Kasai who were the labouring force for making baskets and rubber harvesting within their high Kasai region. This was made known by the Europeans themselves by amplifying their Baluba and or Songhe subjects were loyal to the false public. These so-called Batetela revolts initiated a strategic demonization campaign against Konda speaking populations who killed the Europeans during the revolts. Consider this began in the late 19th century and the population would not have known what the Europeans are publishing about them to the outside world, similar to how they published Kasai populations in the American zoos as pygmies, but they were predominantly a group of Mbinzi speakers who were sold as slaves by a Muluba which they then changed to Bashilele after the revolts. For example, in the late 19th century, Europeans accidentally released a statue depicting a moment they saw a Gonda speaking person defending their woman from a Sultan Swahili Arab. Within this same late 19th century, this statue was removed from the museum's public display because there would have been gross contradictions as these Gonda speaking populations were revolting against the Europeans and the name Batetila was not known amongst themselves at this time. Also ethnographic material on Gonda speaking people specifically from the northern Kasai forest regions were not being displayed to the public until around the 1920s which raises great suspicion as all the atrocities and activities conducted by Basonge within Kasai were super projected as atrocities conducted by Batetela of Sankuhu district. The case only draws validity from the fact Kasongolushi's enslaved subjects and other Arabi slave raiders were so called Kusu from Manyema, but they were not Hamba, Gela, Kale, Konda, Mbole, etc. Do note by the 20th century, the forest Konda speaking populations refer to these Batetela leaders as Sambala or Bangwana or Aribis which drew a distinction from them as they were perceived as invaders, outsiders who came from the east and the Europeans placed them as plantation watchmen. Also in the early 20th century, Gonda speaking populations would find the Europeans bringing in various southern Kasai groups into the Sankoho district in the area known today as Lusambo. Many peoples of these southern Kasai groups mixed with the Gonda speaking people causing more mixed populace to further amplify the name Batetela until all Gonda speaking people knew when anyone in the country uses the term Detela it is referring to them including those who they call Sambala, Bangwana and Aribis. There's another mention that the term Mutetela means a loving god which was likely made up because this information had arisen from what I would describe as a demonization article disguised as a study amongst a fictional ethnic group who the Europeans are calling Batetela. However, I must mention the author's demonization quest developed many incidents of what I would describe as accidental honesty which I will demonstrate to you during the course of this series. In this same article, there is no mention of various Gonda speaking people calling themselves Batetela. It was only the author calling them Batetela. Also, the term Mutetela as God was only accounted for by one group, but this group would have been Arabized according to the author's own records. So why are they using this term for God? Would they not have used Allah? like other Arabized. Even then, this group did not say they are Batetela, it was the author. And most importantly, this write-up was carried out at the beginning of the 20th century and just like the images and statues of Gonda speaking people, this study was only released over a decade later. What was the cause of the delay? Was it as a result of the revolts? Even up to today, long-serving university lecturers, scholars and professors strongly and wrongly make reference to Batetela as a homogeneous 19th century ethnic group or a synonym 
associated with a subjected people known as Baluba and even then just as we're now able to highlight what modern day Didila group was speaking about when the term Batidila is used which Baluba do these same scholars speak about when they use the word Baluba stay tuned for part 7 where we will explore Baluba Kasai <laughs> Hey, hey.